In this video, you are going to learn how a septic tank works and how to build one from start to finish. Basically, there are three common types of septic tanks. One, a one compartment septic tank. Two, a two compartment septic tank. And three, a PVC or plastic septic tank. And for this particular video, you are going to learn how to build a one compartment septic tank with each sock pit from start to finish. This method of constructing a septic tank that I'm about to show you is better because you are able to build a septic tank even in a very confined place. It has low operating costs and low capital costs. This kind of septic tank is also simple and easy to build and by the end of this video, you will have known how to do this by yourself. So be sure to watch this video till the end because you don't want to miss this. Let's first clearly understand what a septic tank means. A septic tank is a self-contained system designed to manage sewage and wastewater from houses and purifies it back into the groundwater system. Meaning everything that you flush from the sink, from the bathroom, from the bathtub, from the toilet, ends up into the ground with the help of the septic tank system. How does a septic tank work? Sewage comes from the house and enters the septic tank through this inlet pipe and once it enters inside, it separates into three layers. The first layer is solid sewage or sludge which settles at the bottom. The second layer is liquid sewage which is the middle layer and the third layer is scum which floats here on top. Scum includes baby wipes or pampers, feminine products or pads, fats and oils and other non-biodegradable products which should always be prevented from entering the septic tank at all costs because they disrupt the process of bacterial action of breaking down the solid sewage into liquid sewage. After the sewage settles in the septic tank, bacteria grows naturally here at the bottom to break down the sludge or solid sewage to liquid sewage. Once the liquid sewage reaches the level of the outlet pipe, it flows to the soak pit. The soak pit is usually filled with hard core, therefore the liquid sewage flows through the hard core to go down into the ground. And the process continues like that every time you use your toilet. And right now, let me show you a simple step by step guide that you can follow to build a one compartment septic tank from start to finish. The major materials required when building a septic tank are 1. Bricks and for this case, we normally use clay bricks cement, sand and aggregates, steel bars to reinforce the top slab and the beams, timber for shattering and waterproofing powder or liquid. The first step is to do excavation. Excavate the area where you are going to build the septic tank and also excavate the pit for the soakway. The dimensions for the two pits will entirely depend on the number of users. For example, for a household of 20 users, you can excavate a septic tank that is at least 4.3 meters along the length, 1 meter along the width and 1.3 meters depth. You can decide to adjust these measurements depending on the available space on site. For example, you can decide to reduce this length here and then increase the depth and width. What matters is attaining the recommended volume and in this case, here we have 400 gallons which is equivalent to 1514 liters. Also excavate the pit for the soak way or the soak pit and for this case, let's say you are excavating a soak pit for 30 users. The minimum diameter here should be 2.1 meters and of a minimum depth 2 meters. Personally, let's assume that I'm the one executing this project. I make sure that this remains as 2.1 meters at this smallest diameter here since we excavate the pit for the soak way like a cone and also make the depth here as 3.2 meters. This table just guides you on what should be the minimum dimensions for the soak way. You have to always excavate a larger soak pit since the septic tank entirely depends on it. Be sure to excavate or build septic tanks at least 30 meters away from water wells or any other water sources. The septic tank should also be at least 1.5 meters away from the main building. The soak pit should also be excavated at least 3.5 meters away from the main building. The second step is to cast a concrete bed at the bottom of the pit. The concrete that we cast here should be of mixed ratio 1 to 3 to 6 that is 1 part of cement, 3 parts of sand and 6 parts of aggregates. And when casting concrete for a single chambered septic tank, the concrete here at the bottom must be sloped that is a 1 in 20 slope. 
a 1 in 20 slope simply means that for every 20 units of the horizontal distance, the slope rises or falls by 1 unit. In simple terms, if you move 20 meters horizontally, the height changes by 1 meter. For example, let's say that the length of the septic tank is 3 meters, which is approximately 10 feet. The height here will be around 150 millimeters or half a foot. When casting concrete for a two-chambered septic tank or a two-compartment septic tank, we cast concrete here at the bottom on level. And when casting concrete for a single-chamber septic tank, it must be sloped. Step 3 is to build the masonry walls for the septic tank. And when building these walls, we consider these factors. Factor number one is that we use clay bricks because they have a low water absorption rate compared to concrete blocks and brown bricks. 2. Provide pillars to the four sides of the walls. These pillars provide extra support to the walls to retain the soil in the sides. The wall thickness should be at least 230 mm. Also ensure that the mortar that you use to build the walls has waterproofing powder or liquid mixed in it to prevent the penetration of water in the wall. Plaster the walls properly with waterproofing powder or liquid within the plaster. Large septic tanks must have reinforced concrete columns. They must have an intermediate ring beam and must have a top solid slab. The fourth step is plumbing, which is the most crucial or most important step when building a septic tank. And right now, I'm going to show you how we do it the correct way. When doing plumbing for any septic tank, you have to ensure that all sewage from the toilet is directed towards the septic tank whereas wastewater from bathrooms, wash hand basins, the sink goes directly to the soak pit without going through the chambers or compartments of the septic tank. This is because wastewater from the house has fats and oils which disrupt the bacterial action of breaking down solid sewage into liquid sewage, hence there will be need for pumping the septic tank all the time, maybe after every few months. When you do plumbing the correct way, as I've just shown you, you will not need any pumping for very many years. The fifth step is to do shattering and steel reinforcement for the top slab. And the way we do steel reinforcement for the top slab is also simple. The concept is that, considering this as our rectangular septic tank, for the middle cross beam, we use Y16 steel bars. Whereas for the beams in the sides, we use Y12 steel bars because they are on top of the walls, meaning the walls in the sides will provide extra support. Whereas we use Y16 steel bars for the cross beam since there is no supporting wall in the middle. Later fix Y12 steel bars while maintaining a spacing of 150 mm for both top bars and bottom bars. Be sure to leave two openings as inspection chambers to ease repair both at the inlet side and the outlet side. The sixth step is to fill the soap pit with hardcore and then cover it carefully with a DPM. When arranging hardcore in the soap pit, you have to arrange it in such way that you leave a gap at the exit position of the pipe such that the liquid sewage can soak away easily into the ground with ease without getting blocked by the hardcore. The last step is to do the final touches. Do landscaping around the septic tank ensuring that running water doesn't run towards its walls. Also fill the septic tank with water before using it. In summary, when building a septic tank, the first step is to do excavation. Cast a concrete bed at the bottom, build the walls, cast concrete for the top slab, do plumbing, fill the soakway and do the final touches. That's all about how to build a single compartment septic tank and how it works. I hope you get something from it. If this video was helpful to you in any way, kindly hit that subscribe button. I would really really appreciate. Watch this next video about how to install a PVC or plastic septic tank from start to finish.